Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and looking at question two from the Junior Cycle Higher Level Sample Exam Paper. This is a numbers question on ratios, proportions and financial maths. The question starts off easy but gradually gets harder. However, nothing too difficult is asked. So let's begin. So question two tells us that Millie bakes cakes and she sells them at the local market. And now part A, the question tells us that she needs four eggs to make each cake. She has 28 eggs. So how many cakes can Millie make? So this is very straightforward, this question. So we just have to divide four into 28 and that's obviously seven. So a very straightforward there, a very straightforward question there. I don't think many people should have uh, too many issues with that. So now let's move on to part B of the question. So Millie makes some filling for her cake with, uh, with only butter and sugar. The ratio of this is the ratio of butter to sugar is five to seven. So one day she makes a total of 2.4 kg filling. So now we have to work out how many grams of sugar that Millie used to make the filling. The first thing I'll point out here is to be careful. It says grams. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna convert, I'm gonna convert this 2.4 kg into grams. So 2.4 kg is uh, 2,400 grams. So it's five to seven. So Another way to write this would be that butter is 5 twelfths and sugar is 7 twelfths as 5 to 7. So that means that there's obviously 12 parts in total. So butter is 5 of these 12 and then sugar is 7 of those 12. So we can write that as butter is uh, 5 over 12 and sugar is 7 over 12. So we want to get the amount of grams that the amount of grams of sugar that Millie used. So we want to get 7 twelfths of 2400. So the first thing we do is to get 1 twelfth. We divide uh, 12 into 2400, which is just uh, 200. So that's 200 grams. Now, so that's one twelfths, but we're going to get seven twelfths. So to get seven twelfths, we just multiply this by seven. 200 by seven is 1,400 grams. So therefore, Millie used 1,400 grams of sugar to make the filling, to make the 2.4 kg of filling. So if you want to leave the ratio as a ratio, you may do so. But uh, I find with some questions, especially questions like this, it can be easier to change them into two separate fractions and then divide by the side, so divide the denominator into whatever the, the number that we're given is and then multiply by the numerator. Um, but as I said, of course, you can leave it as a ratio and it will still work, but I think it's simpler and looks easier um, and, and um, it's more straightforward to do it like this. So that's part B of the question. Now let's move on to part C. So we're told that Millie's buying flour at her local shop and they have two special offers, A and B. So uh, special offer A is that they have, so the one kg bags here are 3.50 each. And then the offer itself is three bags for the price of two. So basically for every three bags, you get one free. And then offer B is, so the bags here are five euro each. Um, and again, it's 1.5 kg. So sorry, here they're 1.5 kg, so they're a bit bigger. Uh, but the special offer here is that they are 20% off. So for special offer A, we're gonna try this first. We're gonna work out how much it will cost her to buy a six kg as that's how much, that's how much she wants to buy. So for special offer A, she'll have to buy six bags. So it'll be 350 by six. And uh, 350 by six is 21. So it's 21 euro for the six bags. So However, remember for every three bags, she gets two free. So she's bought six bags, which means she'll get two bags free. So 350 by two, we're going to minus 350 by two. And that's seven. So 21 minus seven, 14 euro. So it's going to cost her 14 euro to buy six kg of flour with a special offer A. So now let's have a look at special offer B. So now these times, so this, so now this time the bag is 1.5 kg. So um, she'll have to buy four bags to get the six kg. So uh, it'll be five euro by four which is 20 and now it's 20% off. So we're going to get 20% of 20, which is just four. And now we're going to minus this four from 20 to give us the amount that it'll cost her to buy the six kg of flour uh, with offer B. So 20 minus four, so 16 euro. So it's going to cost her 16 euro with offer B and only 14 euro with offer A. So therefore we're obviously going to pick offer A. So that question isn't too difficult. Just make sure to remember that the size of the bags are different with special offer A and special offer B. They're one kg in offer A and 1.5 kg in offer B just keep an eye out for that and always show your workings. So now we're going to move on to part D of the question and part D tells us that Millie sells each cake for 750 and that will give her a profit of 20% so we, we now have to work out how much it costs her to make the cake. So basically what we're saying is that 750 is equal to 120% of the cost as it's 20% added on to the cost so therefore we're going to say that 750 is 120% and the cost itself will be 100% and we're trying to work out the cost. So we'll just say the cost. So either, you know, uh, we're going to put that, we're going to say that the cost is just X and we have to work out what X is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cross multiply. So it's going to be 750 by 100 and then we're going to divide that by uh, 120 and then we'll have our answer uh, X. 
So 750 by 10, uh, sorry, 750 by 100 is uh, 750 and uh, divided by 120, that will give us uh, 625. So therefore it costs her 6 euro and 25 cent to make uh, each cake. So now we're gonna move on to the final part of the question, which is part E of the question. So part E tells us that Millie has 3,000 euro in a savings account uh, with an interest rate of 2.5% per year, uh, which will be four years compounded annually. She doesn't put any money in or take any money out of this account for the four years. So now to work out how much money is in her account after the four years, giving her answer correct to the nearest cent. So you can do this two ways. I'm gonna use the quick way, which is the formula with the formula and tables book, which I think is the way I would recommend for most people to use. But if you're not really sure how this formula works, there is also another way where you can just get how much money she'll have in the account at the end of the year, multiply that by 2.5% and add on the 2.5% and do this four times. And that will give you the amount of money uh, in the account after the four years. But the much simpler way, the much quicker way is just to use the formula in the formula and tables book on page 30. So I'm gonna show, the, I'm gonna show you this now. So it's the first formula there. So F is equal to P times by one plus I to the power of T. So F is uh, the final value, which is what we wanna work out. Uh, P is the principal, and the principal is the amount of money that he put in at the start. So in our case, that's gonna be 3,000. Now I, be careful, I is the interest rate, but it has to be as a decimal, okay? Or else it'll be hard to put into the calculator. So make sure if, for example, the interest rate is uh, 8%, that's not 0.08, it's not 8%. So you don't put in one plus 8%, you put in one plus 0 0.08. And then time is just a uh, time normally in years and regression is in years. So therefore T is just gonna be uh, four. So now let's go back to regression and we're gonna use this formula to work out the uh, value of her investments after the four years. So it's gonna be F is equal to, so P which is 3000 times A, so one plus I, so one plus 0 0.025. Be careful, it's not two point, so 2.5% isn't obviously 2.5 or 0 0.25, it's 0 0.025. And that's to the power of four. So now that's, we can write that as 3000 times by 1.025 to the power of four. And now we're gonna pop this into the calculator to see what answer we get. So we get 3311.438672. So correct at two cents, that's uh, 3311.44 euros. So that's our answer for parity. That's, amount, that's the amount of money that Millie has in her account after the four years, correct to the nearest cent. And obviously there's a, uh, two cents and um, so therefore to two decimal places so that's our answer for part e it's our answer for the final part of the question and the end of the video so thank you very much for watching and i hope i helped